If you knew what was inside a Pokemon pack, would you still open it? Even though you can weigh packs these days and work out whether or not it's got a rare judging by how heavy it is, fortunately, the human eye has not developed X-ray vision, so peeking inside isn't possible. That is, until now. Thanks to the developments of Industrial Inspection and Aaron Wayne, two completely separate entities that at the same time are working on a machine that can peek through Pokemon packs and see what's inside. This is a breakthrough that's gonna make some people a lot of money and cause others to lose a ton. Now this all started about three weeks ago when Industrial Inspection uploaded a video on this channel showing a machine scanning a pre-release booster box of Pokemon cards that had packs inside of it using a CT scanner. And what the machine looks like it's doing anyway is creating a whole bunch of 2D images at different angles and then creating a 3D representation of it. Now, I don't know how we went from the 2D images to there. Incredible technology, but it looks plausible. It looks believable. And from there, they're able to identify that this box had a rare hypno holographic in it just by the silhouette, which makes sense. You can see the silhouette there. And then when you piece the two together, it pretty quickly becomes a hypno card. And then on their website, they uploaded this article talking a little bit about the process, showing a link to the video, and then showing another example of another card which kind of blew my mind because this one is way more detailed than the Hypno, which is an art from, you know, 20, 25 years ago. This entirely went under the radar because the video was uploaded three weeks ago and it only has about 600 views. And I've never heard of industrial inspection until a couple of days ago, thanks to Aaron Wayne, who is another creator, scientist, engineer, who uploaded a video called Digitally Peeking Inside a Pack of Pokemon Cards. So it turns out that Aaron Wayne was working on a similar project at the same time as industrial inspection, which is wild. Two separate entities working on a machine that was scanning through Pokemon packs. My first question is why? It turns out that Aaron was working on this in secret because I guess the technology is kind of dangerous and does have implications for the Pokemon card collecting space. But once Aaron saw that industrial inspection were working on this at the same time, he figured he would also show his process and share this video online, whether or not it was dangerous. The process sounds really simple, but in reality, is pretty complex. Basically, the CT scanner takes a whole bunch of 2D images of a rotating object and then creates a 3D representation of it. And then somewhere between that and where it gets complex using software or whatever method uh, Aaron and Industrial Inspection have developed, they're then able to see the physical representation of the cards inside, even though there are multiple cards before and after the card that we're trying to find, which is the holographic. Aaron Wayne, as far as I can see, is just a hobbyist. He's a scientist, he's an engineer, and he has an interest in Pokemon cards. If you check out his video, and you should on his channel, he talks a lot about his process. So you can see that this is clearly a passion project for him. But basically he saw a CT scanner for sale online locally for about 1500 USD. When it inspected it, it was pretty damaged, but he fixed it up. And that's the hard bit, because you can't just go and buy a CT scanner and then fix it up yourself if you have no understanding of the machine and the process and how the whole thing works. I imagine if you're gonna buy a CT scanner, you're probably looking at like the five to six figure mark. I don't know, I have no knowledge of how expensive CT scanners are, but this doesn't seem like something that the everyday collector, the everyday hobbyist can just go out and do. Either way, the cat is kind of out of the bag and this is something that is entirely possible. And while Industrial Inspection's first video looked promising, looked interesting, but didn't really have a whole lot of proof beyond just this, I guess there wasn't a whole lot of reason to exactly doubt them, but it's always better to see more evidence. And Aaron Wayne provided that in spades. Here's an example of a jungle pack that he scanned that had a holographic pincer in it. And even though his phone is super damaged, come on, bro, you can, you can get a new phone now. I feel like you earned it. You can see that the silhouette there is very clearly pincer. And he did it for another pack. He did it for a fossil pack too. This one was a little bit harder to discern, but you can see that that's the spikes of Gengar. This is the craziest photo though. And I think this is why so many Pokemon card collectors are really divided at the moment. If you go and have a look at Aaron Wayne's video, you'll see in the comment section that uh, a lot of people are saying, this is incredible. This is brilliant. The technology is amazing. You've done something so, so cool. And then you've got a lot of people saying that this is going to ruin the hobby. It's like Pandora's box has been opened. Collecting as we know it is basically done and dusted, which I think is a little bit of an eject reaction, but you can kind of see why this is concerning for some people. I guess you've always been able to weigh packs. So if you didn't know that you can weigh a pack and the heavier it is, the more likely it is to have a hollow. And at certain weights, it's guaranteed basically, especially for the older stuff. So now that you can see through a pack, the sanctity of sealed packs, and there is a big market, there is a big space. A bunch of collectors like to collect just sealed loose packs. The sanctity of 
sealed collecting is basically ruined. One of the crazier breakthroughs here though is the fact that industrial inspection scanned an entire box, not a booster box, but a box that then had packs inside of it and then were able to see the cards inside the packs. That's multiple layers that they've gone through, which suggests that they're probably able to do this for booster boxes as well. And I think that's absolutely wild. Having said all that though, and this is where you're probably gonna think I'm the crazy one. I don't think this is a, the hobby is dead moment. Like a lot of the comments on these videos are claiming. Investing in Pokemon cards is a very contentious topic, especially online. And I feel like I know that more than anybody. I've had my fair share of interactions with Pokemon card investors on this channel, but my stance remains the same. I feel like Pokemon booster boxes and Pokemon cards as an investment are highly, highly speculative and very, very risky by nature. Not just because you're kind of hedging your bets and gambling on the popularity of Pokemon or the volume of product out there, whether the Pokemon company will reprint them. Just the fact that it is a very volatile asset that isn't really controlled and there's a lot of variables. And being able to see through and scan through a pack and work out whether the box you've got has a rare card in it or not is just another variable out there. So you can't be too mad about this because by nature, you're investing in variables. This is just a variable that you weren't aware of. And I feel like not expecting something like this in a way is kind of naive. Now, I'm not saying I knew that one day you're going to be able to scan through a pack of Pokemon cards and see what's inside, but I feel like it's not too far of a logical leap given how far technology has advanced in the last 20 years or so. Basically, Pokemon isn't bulletproof and any speculative asset shouldn't be assumed as such. Collecting cards themselves and physically holding them, putting them in your binder, sharing them, trading them, slabbing them, whatever you do with them remains the least risky path because at the end of the day, you still have the card and the card is the card. Nothing changes that. And this is probably more of an issue for vintage old cards from, you know, 20, 25 years ago because they're easier to discern for one and there's significantly less volume of those Pokemon cards out there than there are modern. Modern, if you can scan it and work out whether it's got an Umbreon VMAX inside of it or not, I personally don't think it matters too much just because there's so much volume of it out there. It'll impact things a little bit, but it's a bit of a drop in the ocean. It's just another thing that makes investing in modern so risky and in my opinion, silly. I'm also not too sure how easy it's gonna be to scan and see through modern packs because the texture and the detail on modern Pokemon cards is way, way, way more intense than old vintage cards, which are relatively flat and just have the printed image and then the holographic around it. So I don't think it's gonna impact modern too much, but as the technology develops and we've seen it get to this point, so it's natural to assume it is going to develop further and get more powerful, then as we get to that point, yeah, we'll probably see things change a little bit. This is probably the coolest part of the work that Aaron did, in my opinion anyway, his tech has developed to this point where you're actually able to measure the distances on the card, which means you should be able to like pre-grade the card through the pack and know whether it's worth opening the pack or not. Because the pack you've got could have the rarest card from that set. Maybe it's the Gengar from Fossil or maybe it's the Charizard from base set. But if you can look at the borders and measure to the millimeter that it's potentially off center, so it's not gonna get that perfect 10 grade, then you're better off just keeping the card inside the pack instead of opening it. So there's insane potential for grading cards. And Aaron has actually spoken a little bit, you can see in the description of his video, uh, but also inside his video. And again, I implore you to go and check that out because the dude is super, super passionate and it is a really cool development that he may present this technology to grading companies and see where it goes from there. The concept of grading a pack and then maybe the label saying that it has a PSA 10 Charizard inside of it is insane. It's hard to even process, but at the same time, it feels like just another thing that is offered to collectors. And that's what makes the hobby cool. And it's kind of why I think the hobby is dead statements, uh, short-sighted. This is just an evolution or maybe it's a mutation of what we've come to expect and what we see as like the standard right now. But the fact that two different parties were working on this at the same time is wild to me and kind of suggests that maybe somebody was doing this out there this entire time, the last 10 or 15 years, and we just didn't know about it. A lot of those sealed packs that you may have been buying at cons or on eBay have potentially been pre-scanned through somebody's CT scanner. Aaron did say that the technology has kind of been out there since 2003. So it's not entirely outside the realm of possibility. So I can kind of see why this has taken some of the fun out of collecting for some people in the space. But if there's anything I've learned over the last couple of years, it's that people will engage in this hobby and collect in totally different ways. Something that seems super weird 
for you is normal to somebody else. And at the end of the day, this is just an evolution. Like I said, it's a mutation of something that we've gotten comfortable with. And whether you stand to lose money or gain money from this, I think we can all agree. It's fucking cool, man.